Good morning, everyone. I'm Sue Boback. I'd like to welcome those who are worshiping with us online and here in person. On the back of your bulletin, you see uh, many opportunities for you to be involved in fellowship, encouragement, and spiritual growth. That's the meaning of the life groups. There's a Bible study that's continuing with Terry Parkinen on Mondays at 6.30, women's prayer ministry on Tuesdays at 1, a women's Bible study on the book of James, James Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., which will conclude this week with Chapter 5. Crossroads, a men's study conquering addictions, also meets on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m., there's a men's Bible study on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. And then the children can be involved, um, the 6th through 8th graders and the 9th through 12th on Wednesdays at 6, Kids Quest on Thursdays at 6.30, Young Adult Fellowship, all young adults 18 and up. And it says the next gathering will be determined. Um, and the Silver Seekers today are having a um, St. Patrick's Day brunch at Diane and Steve Pelinen's at 770 West Virginia. And that's for those of us who are 60 years old and up. Also, there's going to be a Good Friday service here on 329 at 630. Now, the upcoming events our men's fellowship breakfast on Saturday the 23rd. UPBC day, day camp registration is open and it says here that it's the last week to register. You can go to the website which is listed here in your bulletin and it tells you the grades, the cost is $35. It runs from June 17th through the 21st and a church van will be available for rides to and from. Now. On this tear-off piece in your bulletin, which you're also going to fill out if you're a visitor here today, you should fill that out and mark ride needed um, and put it in the offering basket if that's your case. There's something called Art in Light Kids Summer Day Camp Art Camp, June 3rd through the 7th. I'd like to do that, it's too bad I'm too old. Um, woman's Ministry Survey, there are um, on the tables, I believe, over there, and there's a red basket over there. Please take a look at it and read it and fill it out and then put it back in that basket. There's a leadership team meeting Wednesday, the 27th, 6.30, and that's a reminder to all team leaders to do your monthly report and to come to that meeting. Newcomers Luncheon coming up on April 7th at noon, and we want you to sign up on that table over there and that table over there. Um, if you are interested in having your baby dedicated, your child dedicated to the Lord, um, that service will take place on Sunday, April 14th, and there's also sign-up sheets on the tables. Then on Sunday, April 14th also, there's an all-church chili feed and Bible trivia. Start reading Genesis and Exodus so you can win. The Mexico missions trip will be the 22nd through the 29th of June, and there's details provided on both of the tables. Work projects are available if you need financial support to help fund your participation in that. It says on the bottom that prayer requests for the prayer team can be texted to me. So if we've never met, again, I'm Sue Boback. You can text me at the, my number that's listed here. You can also give your prayer request to the pastor, the secretary, or to Rhonda Parkinen. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a new ministry that we're involved in here. Did you know that if you come to Crossbridge just one time, just once, that you're being prayed for, or if you've worshiped with us online, or if you're a visiting grandma, or a spouse, or a visiting youth, you've been prayed for. Whether you are a member here or here for the first time, you're being prayed for. Colossians 1.9 says, for this reason since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom 
and understanding. Now, somewhere in your life, God has, someone has said to you, God bless, or God bless you. And that may seem like a quick greeting, but it is a powerful request to our Lord to be gracious to you. Now, you can give this blessing to others, some you may never meet, by becoming a prayer companion at Bell Hospital Chapel. I've been participating in this off and on since Christmas. A prayer companion gives 15 minutes minimum. I think we all have 15 minutes, right? To sit in the chapel to pray for the prayer requests that are left by visitors to the chapel. The prayer companion time may include visitors who either want to be alone and quiet while you're there or request a spoken prayer by you. Prayers are provided. Or you may not see anyone in the whole time that you're there. Please consider how you might give 10 minutes or 30 minutes once a week, every two weeks, once a month, whenever you have some time between appointments. I will be doing a second training coming up shortly. I can meet with you personally, and we can go to the chapel together, or we can meet in a group. As I said, I've been a prayer companion off and on since Christmas. I went there on Christmas Eve when I delivered the cookie tray, and so when I went in through the ER and to the um, nurse's station for inpatient, I continued walking down the hall, and I went into the chapel and I sat there and I prayed for the requests at that time. I find that the peace of the chapel and the opportunity to care through prayer for our community is very meaningful in my own walk. So I encourage you again to think about how you might use 10, 15 minutes of your time now and then to pray for others in our community. Thank you. Morning, Crossbridge. Morning. Happy St. Patty's Day. My wife's Irish, and I'm like, why is everybody wearing green up here? And then I'm like, oh, man, my wife's Irish. Like, it's kind of a big deal, so I have a little green, so I can't really get pinched. Um, today, we're reading out a Psalm 116, so if you'd like to turn there, I'll give you a second for that. <clears throat> so Psalm 116, 1 through 15. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death encompassed me, and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. O oh, may it be in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, we just come before you this morning humbly, and we just thank you for everything you've given us and blessed us with. God, and most of all, we thank you for sending Jesus to die for us, Lord, and just the gospel message that um, although we are dead in our sins, you sent a Savior for us, and there's so much power in that, um, and you took our penalty on that cross, Lord, and that we now uh, defeated death with you if we believe and trust in that, Lord, and thank you for sending the Holy Spirit um, as our helper, and Holy Spirit, we just ask you this morning to stir in the hearts of everybody here whether somebody doesn't believe in the gospel message yet, Holy Spirit, just work in their heart this morning. Um, if somebody has believed that message before but has um, turned back to the ways of the world, Lord, and fallen away from you, we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you will just stir in their heart and um, just revive 
that um, fire that you once had in there. And Lord, for the believers in here, I just pray that you will strengthen them and just produce the fruit of your spirit in them and in their lives this week and help Crossbridge just be a church that loves one another and that the community can see the love that we have for each other as a family. Lord, and I just pray that um, Crossbridge will also uh, just boldly proclaim the gospel. Just be a church that um, just runs to you with everything. And Holy Spirit, we just ask you um, to, to, again, work in our hearts this morning and just speak through Pastor Kevin. Just give him the words to speak. And we just ask all these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Please stand and worship with us.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. Thanks, worship team. Ushers, prepare for this morning's offering. Kids are dismissed at kids' time this time as well. Let's pray this morning, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we lift you up. We thank you that we're in this place to worship you. So, Father, we worship you this morning through everything that we do in this place. Father, we thank you so much for the freedoms that you give in this country. Father, this morning we just pray for your leading of the Holy Spirit. Father, this morning teach us of the Lord's Supper. Father, that goes right back to Genesis where the Lamb's blood, the perfect Lamb's blood, was over the posts that saved many in Israel. Father, what a picture we have of that there spring forward to Christ and the ultimate sacrifice once and for all 
who died for us, who shed his blood that we might live. That there's no condemnation those who are in Christ Jesus. Father, you sent your Son that in and through him we might be saved. We thank you, Father, for that message this morning. Now, Father, I just lift up the many ministries here at this local flock. Father, we thank you, Lord, for them. Father, we just pray this morning for those who are sick. Father, those who have lost loved ones recently. Father, lift them up this morning. Bless them. Father, may others go around and encourage them as things start to settle down in their lives. Father, continue to be with them behind the scenes, in front of them. Guide them, Father. We thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, this morning for the Mullards, Lord, who continue their work in Africa, continue to protect them, continue, Lord, to bless their ministry as they're translating, Lord, the book of 1 Corinthians. That's a book complete. Father, just pray for many lives to be saved over there. Lord, I just lift up our country to you. Lord, we're told to pray for our leaders. So this morning, Father, we just pray for them, for wise decisions, that they might turn to you as their one and only Savior. We just commit this time, Father, to you now. We thank you, Lord, for this morning's offering. Bless it wherever it may go. And pray this in your name. Amen. find comfort you will find truth you will find blessing you will find joy you will find
grip of sin it will release. Thank you. Appreciate that. This morning I come to you as a pastor, your pastor, and I just want you to know I, I want the best for all of you. I pray for you. I pray that the, the Lord would give you strength, that, that you'd have the Lord's best. You know, I understand that in your life there are many stresses coming your way. You have financial stresses, you have people stresses, you have friends and family stresses, you have many different things that come at you, health issues, many different struggles coming at you, and I pray the best for you. I prayed for you this morning. I pray that the Holy Spirit would be at work in each of your hearts, and I want you to know that you're loved. I love you, and the Lord God loves you. He cares about you so very much. You are, you are not forgotten. God knows your struggles. And I want the best for you. I want you to have power to live this life. You are trying to live this life sometimes in your own strength. You're trying to do all the things you do in your own strength, and you, you, you keep butting your head against the wall, and you're like, how do I do this? The Lord Jesus said in Luke 15, I send you a helper. That's the Holy Spirit. He has power for your life. I mean, this isn't just little power. This is power. This is the same power that created the world. This is the same power that created the universe. This is the same power that creates the molecules and the atoms and the, the biggest things to the littlest things in the world. The same power of the Holy Spirit God wants to use in your life. But he wants you to depend on him. He wants your faith in him. And so he waits for you to ask him for that power. Are you trying to live on your own power? Are you trying to live in your own strength and you grit your teeth and say, I can do this life myself? You're missing all that God has for you. And as a pastor, I don't want you to miss what ha God has for you. I don't want you to go through the, the rituals and go through the church and just be like, this is empty, I have no power here. I want you to understand there is truly power in the Holy Spirit for your life. You don't have to live clawing through this life. You can live with calm and a peace and a strength and know that God is there for you. And you can see his answered prayer in your life because you've asked him. But if you do it on your own, there is no power for you. If you do it in your own strength, you won't see the answered prayer. You need the strength of God in your life. The Holy Spirit does many things, and you've heard me talk about it many times, but I'm just going to tell you a few things that you need to pray every day that the Holy Spirit would do in your life. Ephesians 3.16 tells us, he strengthens our inner spirit. He strengthens our spirit. Would you ask God to give you strength for your spirit? It says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 8, it says he gives you wisdom. You need wisdom for this generation. We live in hard times. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom to know the difference between right and wrong and how to live this life. We need wisdom each day, don't we? We need the wisdom of God. If you're a parent, you need the wisdom to lead your kids in a difficult generation. In Acts 9, 31, it says he comforts us. He's there for you in your suffering. Lord, I need you to comfort me. I need your encouragement. Do you ever ask the Holy Spirit to give you encouragement? He is beautiful. When I ask him for the Holy Spirit to give me encouragement, he brings somebody into my life and says, wow, God loves you. Or he brings a song and it, says, I, it talks about God's encouragement or his love. Ask God to encourage you in your suffering and your struggle. And he promises the Holy Spirit's power for you. Romans 5.5, 5, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You need hope. Lord, give me hope. The Holy Spirit has promised he'd give you hope. Are you discouraged today? Are you going through a tough time? Do you need wisdom? Do you need strength from God? Ask the Holy Spirit to give it to you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus didn't just die for your salvation. He died for you to have the Holy Spirit and have power for your life. Don't miss what God has for you. If you come to this church, it's not just about salvation. And that's the wonderful thing of Jesus. Is he brings us salvation. But there's also the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you from the inside out. It's a beautiful thing. And I just pray that you would not miss what God has for you. He wants to give you encouragement. He wants to give you strength. 
He wants you to depend on him. But if you're just doing this in your own strength, you're going through life, you forget about him every day, you don't even think about God, there will be no power in your life. And so I want to pray a prayer right now that the Holy Spirit, and each of you, I pray that you pray this as well, that the Holy Spirit would give you strength and power in your own life as we go. Let's pray right now for the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we love you, and we thank you for dying on the cross and paying the price for our sin. Lord, we confess we are sinners, and we know that we are sinners. We thank you that when you died, you made a way for us to have that Holy Spirit. Then we received you in, that Holy Spirit came into us, but Lord, so many times we forget to ask you to do what you do. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need your power in our lives today. We need you to help us by your Spirit. Would you strengthen our inner spirit today? Would you give us a great sense of strength because of your Holy Spirit in our lives? Would you give us wisdom to have discernment about what to do in this life? Day after day, Lord, that we would have strength and wisdom to be able to think about what we're to do for your glory. Lord God, comfort us. Give us encouragement with the, the struggles we have, the heaviness of this life. Lord, we need your comfort. We need your encouragement today. Lord, draw near to us and empower us by your Spirit. We need your hope, Lord. By your help or your Holy Spirit, encourage us and be there for us. Holy Spirit, bless us today. Put your, shine upon us. Shine your face on us. Lord, we don't go through the motions of ritual of church, pretending to be something we're not. We want you to truly transform us from the inside out, Lord. Give us love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Holy Spirit, transform us to the image of Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't it awesome what the Holy Spirit can do and is willing to do in our lives? I pray that you would grab hold of that today. That was just my mini-sermon before the sermon here. So now we're, now we're to the real sermon for the day. But uh, I think that's very powerful. But we've been talking about Moses in, in Exodus. And last week was kind of hard to hear the 10th plague upon the Egyptians, the firstborn. Every firstborn was killed by the wrath of God. And the, the Holy Spirit passed over the believers that put the blood on the doorposts of the house. The Holy Spirit passed over that. And... Uh, and so I want to tell you about this feast, the Passover feast of the Old Testament that imp was implemented that day. It was put in place that God said, you need to remember what happened. You need to remember what happened that day when the Holy Spirit passed over, when the Lord passed over the Israelites. You need to remember that. But I'm going to bring you, bring you to the future farther on and show you how Jesus took the Passover feast and gave us the Lord's Supper. And how important we understand what that all means, that we understand the meaning of it all. You see, last week I tried to help connect the dots. That Jesus is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is the, is the sacrifice. So back in the Old Testament, when they would sacrifice a lamb, it was an atonement. That means like a deposit slip. It's not the real deal yet, but it's your deposit. When you're going to buy something, you put down money for it, right? And that's your deposit. And it says that it's a sure thing. It's going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pay the full amount. And so the Israelites, when they gave a sacrifice of a lamb, it was a deposit. It was an atonement. It wasn't the real blood that was really going to save them, but it was a symbolism of what was going to happen. The real blood is the blood of Jesus because he is the lamb of God. Jesus is the lamb of God. So all through the Old Testament, the Passover meal was a symbolism of what was going to happen in Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. See, God makes no mistakes. He knows the beginning from the end. He, everything is all planned out. There is no mistake. Every house and every family was to eat the lamb. They were to eat that meat. They were to devour it all. And it was very similar that we take the bread, the unleavened bread, to represent the body of Christ, the Lamb of God. We take it in because we want all of him inside of us. We want him. The 14th day Passover lamb was slain. On the 14th day, the lamb of, was slain that very day, exactly the time when God wanted to be slain. Do you know when Jesus died on the cross? 
exactly on that 14th day, exactly the same time that the lamb in the temple was being slain, Jesus was hung on that cross and died for our sins. You see, this, this whole story it connects all the way through the Bible. There is nothing missed. All of it is perfect. God has a perfect plan. The firstborn lamb died in the place of the firstborn child of all the Israelites. And Jesus is the firstborn, and he is the one that died for us. Romans 8, 29, he died on the cross in order to reunite or reconcile us with God. What an incredible connection. All these things connect together. You see, we were given freedom from the sin and the bondage of our past because of what Jesus did at the cross. See, the Israelites looked forward to Christ. It's the same salvation what they had. They look forward to the Christ, and we look back to the Christ. It's the same blood that saves us, that saved the Israelites. The Lamb of God is our, it was where we find our salvation because it was pure and innocent blood. And we are passed over at judgment because of our trust in the blood of Christ. You see, there are many different feasts that the Israelites had to begin to take from that point on. The Passover feast they did every year after that. Every year they did the feast of the Passover. But there are other feasts too. The Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. They would, the Feast of Trumpets, they would worship and they would recognize the return of Christ and the praise that would come when Christ comes. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, describing the sinless life of the Messiah to come. They would have a feast for that. Pentecost, after 50 days, the feast that would celebrate Pentecost. The Day of Atonement, the Jews... Um, they recognized the piercing of the Messiah to come and the repent of their sins and receive the Messiah in Zechariah. You see, all the different sins, the Tabernacle of Booths feast, all the different feasts took place and they, these rituals were to remember what had happened but to look forward to Christ to come. But when Jesus came, he did a transition. Instead of you having to do all the feasts, Instead of you and I to having to do all the ceremonial laws, going to the high priest in Jerusalem, instead of us having to do sacrifices of a lamb each year, instead of us having to do all the rituals, instead of us having to go through the food rituals, you know the Old Testament taught all the Jews that they had to eat certain foods. We don't have to do that anymore. We don't have to do the ceremonies. We don't have to go through all the feasts. And all those different things, because Jesus came and he fulfilled all the feasts. He did all the feasts perfectly. He did everything perfectly and fulfilled all of the things of the Old Testament. He did a wonderful thing. So Jesus fulfills Passover feast and introduces the new Lord's Supper. So listen to the first feast, the Passover feast given in Exodus through Moses to the people. What was the feast? For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Wait, hold it, what is unleavened bread? It's bread without yeast. Unleavened bread. He's telling the Jews that they are to eat bread that has no yeast in it. And so it doesn't rise. What's bread that doesn't rise? It's not fluffy like my mom's. My mom's was so fluffy, the other kids were jealous because it was so airy. My mom would let it rise too long and it would be big. I had big old sandwiches because it's all airy. And the yeast went crazy. Built, so I had big bread. But this unleavened bread is flat. It's harder. It's flat because there's no yeast. In the Bible, what does yeast mean? Yeast is sin. Yeast is sin. And so there is to be no sin in the body of Christ. And there was no sin in the body of Christ. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day there, there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days. And nothing with yeast shall be seen among you, nor shall any dough with yeast be seen among you in all your borders. And you shall tell your sons on the day, say it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. What did the Lord do when I came out of Egypt? He set me free. He set the freedom, gave freedom to all the Israelites from Egypt. Verse 9, and it shall serve as a sign to you on your hand and as a reminder in your forehead that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. 
For with a powerful hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Therefore you shall keep this ordinance at its appointed time from year to year. Now when the Lord brings you to the land of Canaanite, as, as he swore to you and to your fathers and gives it to you, you shall devote to the Lord every firstborn of a womb and every firstborn offspring of an animal, that you own the males belonging to the Lord, but every firstborn of donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, then you shall break its neck, and every firstborn among your sons you shall redeem. And it shall be when your sons ask you in time to come, saying, What is this? Then you shall say to him, With a powerful hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. You see, the Lord, the Lord instituted the meal of the Passover. And every year the Jews would celebrate Passover, year after year after year. And it's called, now it's called the Seder meal. The Jews still use the Seder meal. They would sit down and have the Seder meal every year at Passover. As a traditional dinner for the Jews, food is eaten, prayers are given, prayers are recited, songs are sung. Over and over again, over the years, the Jews have done this. One is that, that they eat the, the lamb. They eat the shank of the lamb. They eat that to remember that the lamb, the blood of the lamb, had been given to them so that the, the spirit of death would pass over them. And then on that, on that table was the unleavened bread. And they would eat the unleavened bread and they would remember that there was to be no sin. And they were to clean their houses of all the yeast and get all the sin out of their house. And it all echoed what was going on from the past with Moses. Of unleavened bread is equated, equated with, the leaven in the bread is equated with sin. And we are to clear out, clear out and get rid of the sin of our life. And so as it comes to the table today, we're going to clear out the sin of our lives. We're going to ask for forgiveness. We're going to re be refreshed and renewed and clean out our house, our soul, before the Lord. Remember we talked about hyssop, the branch that was used over the door frame. The blood was posted there. And so today we're going to drink from the cup. And the cup is going to represent the blood of Christ. And it's going to be like the blood over the door. And it's going to symbolize the, the forgiveness that we have in Christ and his, his sacrifice of blood at the cross. And so we come, we come and finish the Passover meal and we realize the Passover meal was the Israelites celebrating their freedom from slavery. What a freedom to be, can you imagine being a slave all your life, making stones? We talked about this last week. Can you imagine the hardship that they went through and to be set free? And so every year from that time on, they celebrated the freedom that they had. And so it is for us. When we're coming to the, to the table, the Lord's table, we celebrate the freedom in our lives from sin. We celebrate that God has paid the price for us and we can move on in life and be fresh and renewed. So today, we look at Jesus. Jesus. We think of Jesus and we remember that he came to change from being a Passover meal to the Lord's Supper. He came to be our Passover. He came to take the place of that whole Passover meal. And so it's a time of memory, a time of redemption, a time of new life, a time of community. We come together as a brothers and sisters in Christ. We sacrifice, we think of the sacrifice of Jesus and we celebrate that. The Bible talks about the Messiah and says, like a lamb led to the slaughter. In 1 Corinthians 5, it says, Jesus is the ultimate Passover sacrifice. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus brings a whole new covenant, a whole new time of life. He brings the Lord's Supper. We take the Lord's Supper and we remember the resurrection of Christ. Christ. And when he took the cup, listen to this. Listen to Jesus. Jesus introduces the Lord's Supper, Luke 22, 7 through 23. 
Now the first day of the unleavened bread came in which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And so Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us so that we may eat it. They said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him to the, into the house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upstairs room prepared in the, it there. And they left and found everything just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, he reclined at the table. Jesus reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this, share, share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it into, to them, saying, this is my body which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after that had he, they had eaten, saying, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. You see, Jesus took the, the tradition of the Passover and he changed it all. Jesus fulfilled all the things of the Passover. What a beautiful thing that Jesus came. Everything he did in his life fulfilled all those feasts, all those celebrations. Paul tells us you can still celebrate those if you want. You can still have those feasts, but they don't have as much meaning now because Jesus fulfilled all of them. We don't have to go back and have each of those different feasts. Rather, we look at Christ. And Jesus is beautiful because he doesn't make it more complicated. He simplifies it. He brings it down to the simple. He talks about the bread, his body that was given as a sacrifice. He talks about the cup, his blood that was given for us. He simplifies it. You don't have to go through a big old feast. It's not about the food. It's all about Jesus. So some people in the early church used to come to the church for the, for the Lord's Supper, and they'd try to get there in front of everybody else, and they'd gobble the food up, and they'd eat it up. And they were missing the whole point. This isn't about eating food. This is about committing our heart to Jesus. This is about being restored before the Lord and being renewed and refreshed in the Lord. Maybe you've grown up in a church where it's just a tradition. You just always do communion over and over and over again. And you've forgotten the heart love for Christ. You've forgotten the meaning of what he has done for you. That he laid down his life for you personally. Communion is a time, communion is a time the Lord's Supper is a time to take it very, very personal. This is for you, Jesus says. He died for you to pay the price for your sin. He suffered on the cross for you. Jesus was very intentional about the way he did the Lord's Supper. He wanted them to understand the deeper meaning. Just before this, you remember what he did? He got down on his knees and he washed the feet of the disciples. To show them how much he loved them. He didn't want to just go through the motions of a religious ritual. He demonstrated his love for those men. Jesus doesn't want us to go back to the old rituals of the Passover. He doesn't want us to just look back at how the Israelites were set free. He wants us to look back at how and remember what he's done for us. Remember how we were set free from our sin. We're not looking at the lamb in Egypt anymore. We're looking at the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, on the, on the hill of Calvary. He ends the old ways and he starts anew, the new, the new Lord's Supper. He shuts the curtain on the past and he opens the new economy of his kingdom. He institutes, uh, institutes the one new feast that we are to come to. We're not here to eat a big meal. We're not here to gobble food today. We're to eat just a little bit 
to remember how beautiful and how wonderful Jesus is for each of us. We come to this time and this place and we prepare ourselves to come before the Lord and commit ourselves anew and afresh. We're coming up on Good Friday and we're going to worship together on Good Friday and we're going to reflect on the death of Christ and it's going to be a time, a somber time because it's very serious that Jesus would die for us but we need to recognize the celebration that it's the end of all the feasts it's the end of all the sacrifices it's the end of all the ceremonies it's the end of all the prophecies of the Christ to come because he came all the sacrifice fulfilled the payment for our sins. Some of you still feel guilty after you've confessed your sin to Jesus. You still feel like, oh, I've got sin, Jesus can't forgive me. You see, the sacrifice of Jesus was once and for all. If you put your faith in Christ, you don't have to keep running back and saying, forgive me, give me salvation anew and afresh. You've been saved. You don't have to fear the losing of your salvation. But today we will confess our sin, not because we're afraid of losing our salvation, but it's to keep our relationship with Jesus right. Keep it right before him. It's not we're losing our salvation. Again, we have to keep running back for forgiveness for, the, for salvation, but it's keeping our relationship fresh. If I kick my, knee, my wife in the knee, it doesn't mean I'm stopped being married. It means she's, I need to set things right. I need to go and say I was wrong. Forgive me. Will you forgive me for this? is keeping the relationship right. And so today, we're going to come to the table and we're going to prepare our hearts to be right with God. We're going to prepare ourselves to take this rightly. You see, the bread that Jesus broke represented his body that was sacrificed on the cross. The cup represents the blood that was shed on our behalf, sealing the covenant, finishing the covenant, the promise we are not only to remember what he did for us, but we are to show it today by partaking of the cup and the bread, the bread and the cup. Communion is a picture of what happened on the cross and what it means and the impact of our lives upon our hearts. Jesus suffered on the cross for our sacrifice to renew our focus on Christ. Today, look at Christ. Look at yourself. Examine yourself. Where do I stand before Christ? Have I truly put my faith in Christ? We should partake with reverence. That means we honor Jesus today. This isn't something you do lighthearted. You don't just laugh about this and giggle about this, that you take his bread. We do this with reverence. We do it in a love for Jesus and the fellowship of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We come together in a loving family. We do this together. We have a deep sense of gratitude. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. That should be the words on your heart as we consider this time together. He was willing to die for each of us. The King of kings and the Lord of lords stepped off his throne in order to die for your sin and mine. We gather together to observe the Lord's Supper. It is not just a memory of him, but today he's promised he will be with us. Do you understand as we partake of this meal together that Jesus is right here with us? He has promised to be with us today The believer communes with the Lord in communion. We commune with him. We entertain our relationship with him. 1 Corinthians 11, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You see, Jesus was betrayed that night. Judas betrayed him. And so it's important that we not be betrayers as well. Don't play the game of you being a believer, saying you follower of Jesus, but really, truly, you're living your own life without Jesus. Don't betray Jesus like Judas did. 
Come to the meal with a right heart. Prepare yourself with a right heart. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you some time to set your heart right. We're going to be quiet before the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 11 it says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. You don't want to be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. You don't want to be guilty of killing Christ. And so you need to come with an, in a worthy way. You need to approach the table in a worthy way. It says, but a person must examine himself. In so doing, he is to eat the bread, eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So before we do the communion together, I'm going to ask you to examine your heart. Examine your life before God. What is my life before God? Have I confessed my sin? Have I asked him for forgiveness? Ask the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin. Ask him to show you what you need to confess. And then confess it. And that's what it means to prepare your heart and believe in his forgiveness. For the one who eats and drinks and drinks judgment on himself if he does not properly recognize the body, for this reason many among you are weak and sick and our number are asleep. But if we judged ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. And so that's why we need to judge ourselves. We need to look at ourselves honestly and say, Lord, this is who I am. I'm being honest with you, Lord. I'm a sinner. Will you forgive me? This is what you've, con this is what you've brought for me to confess, and I've confessed that sin before you. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together, eat, wait for one another. So we, we take the cup and the bread, and we hold it until we're all ready, and we take it together. If anyone is hungry, have him eat at home, so you do not come together for judgment. This is not a time to gobble down the food. This is not a time just to enjoy the taste of the drink. This is a time to focus on Christ and to look at him. So let's take time to be quiet and set our heart right before the Lord. Would you examine yourself now in prayer and ask the Lord to show you what you need to confess? How have we missed the mark? Holy Spirit, convict us now of our sin. Convict us about what is right. Convict us about the judgment to come. Lord, if it be words, if it be our actions, if it be our thoughts, our motives, these things that we have sinned in, Lord, we confess before you. We believe, Jesus, you died on the cross to pay the price for our sin. We ask you to forgive us and cleanse us. Make us clean before you. Give us the new clothes of Christ that we be white and clean and pure before you. Lord Jesus, we recognize that your gift, your sacrifice on the cross is a great sacrifice. Lord, it's the one that we could not even pay ourselves. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you and honor you now. And we come before you as a church, as individuals, Lord. We come before you and believe in you as our Savior. We celebrate and we commit ourselves to you anew and afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd ask the men to come forward if they would as we prepare for the meal. Are you in a hurry? Are you wanting to leave today? Are you wanting to run? Slow down. Take time to realize what this is. This is a precious moment when the Lord Jesus is with us. This is a time to reflect what as God has done for each of us. What a beautiful moment it is to reflect on the God's love for us. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, 
This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm going to ask Dan if he'd lead us in prayer as we pray before we receive the bread. Father, we thank you so much for this time and this sacrifice, this one act of injustice that covers all of our injustice, sir, that we do for you. Uh, Father, this bread reminds us of the body that was broken. Um, at any time you could have stopped it, and yet you loved us enough to go on through and let it happen. That's it's just we're forever eternal, and we're thankful that Pastor has prepared our hearts, allowed us to remember this, and do this in a worthy manner. In Jesus' name, amen. And they'll distribute this. If you just hold it till we all take it together. When judgment day comes, we will have a peace and a calm because the Lord Jesus has given his body for us. He has taken our place, something we couldn't even do ourselves. None of us is worthy. None of us is good enough to enter those gates of heaven on our own. It's only through his sacrifice. Let's take this together. Remember of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In the same way, he, Jesus, also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink it, for often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I'm going to ask Terry if he'd lead us in prayer before we receive the cup. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much to send your son who willingly 
took upon him the sins of the world. Father, we thank you so much that as we celebrate, we remember the blood that was shed for us. For only through it can we be saved. Father, remember that it's a new covenant that represents this cup. Father, may we take of it worthily this morning. We thank you again so much for your son. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. And again, we'll distribute this, and then if you would hold it, and we'll take it together. Lord Jesus' blood was shed for us. What a magnificent gift. His pureness and blood. So the judgment of God would not come upon us. We've been passed over because of the Lamb of God. Let us take this together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Amen. Please stand.
weeks are going to be the greatest celebration of the church of Jesus Christ, and we're going to celebrate uh, the Palm Sunday, and we're going to celebrate his entering Jerusalem. What a great celebration it's going to be. We're going to rejoice in the next couple of days. We're going to talk about Jesus a lot the next couple of days, and I, we're going to beg people who don't know Christ to put their faith in Christ. We pray that they will not end up in judgment, but they'll come to faith in Christ. The next two weeks are a time to invite friends. It's a time to bring your neighbors so that they might hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray the Lord would open the doors of our church, that we might welcome everybody that comes in with the love of Christ. Let's go in prayer. Father God, as we leave this place, we pray that your spirit would be upon us, that there would be a joy about us that would be different, Lord, that we would be a people set right with you, a people who trust in you and know that you are with us. Strengthen us now by your spirit as we go. Strengthen our children, Lord. We pray for their, their lives, Lord, that they would come to salvation. Fathers, we go from this place. Let us live as a light to this dark world. We praise you, Jesus, for all that you do. We thank you for this time as a family. Lord, we thank you for the love that you share with us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like prayer, Terry and I will be up here in the front. If anybody needs prayer today, we're going to stay up here for prayer.